Hey, what's up guys? Footy Manager TV here and welcome to another episode of my Schalke story. Number 8, I believe now. I'm going to start to do a lot of episodes. Same with my Arsenal Let's Play. I've got Barcelona as well, but that's it's a sort of different one. I'll explain that in the next video whenever I get around to it. But yeah, I play more than I actually make videos on that one because it's sort of a more of a long-term game kind of thing. But like I said, I'll explain that in that video. And for now, my Schalke situation right now, the board is really displeased with my league performance, as you can see, we're seventh, but I don't think it's all that bad. We're only basically one win away from being third, pretty much. If we win the next match, but the next match is uh, Bayern Munich, but really, um, they shouldn't be too. Is it, Am I just seeing different things to anyone else? But to me, um, that's not a bad situation, because if we go on a good run, which we are on, if we continue playing like this, we'll be in the top four and not really far from first, pretty much, but Bayern Munich, they're gonna be, it's going to be hard to catch them, but anyway... I'll show you what I'm talking about in the confidence and all that kind of thing there. Uh, it's very insecure, but I don't think it's that bad. They said they're unhappy with a 2-0 lose, or 2-0 loss, I should say, against Dortmund, but Dortmund, the second best team in the league, that's sort of expected. So, um, yeah, I'm not too sure about that, but then they say a minor positive is the fact that the fans believe Klaas-Jan Huntelaar is to be performing at the highest level. So, um, that's no, I don't think it's as bad as, I don't think I should be in a very secure, very insecure position. So leave your comments. Um, what do you think about my league position? It's not that bad, is it? it? It, like I said, only, if I, I'm only, what, two points away from third. So yeah, I don't know, if I lose the next match, does that mean I get fired? And it's against Bayern Munich. So if I do, that will be a bit unlucky. And yeah, I just save before this match in case, but anyway, um. Uh, let's in the Champions League as well. Where am I? I'm first in the Champions League group stage as well, and yeah, it looks like we're going to finish first in the group. Yeah, we're going to finish first for sure. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure what else I can do really. And you know, the start of the season is really hard because your tactic is not fully fluid and all that kind of thing. But anyway, we have a match against FC Bayern Munich, and we've got to try and get a win here somehow to really to to not get fired somehow. Um, it's very insecure. And I talked to the board last time to give me some more time, but they said, um, yeah, I can't even remember what they say. See in the last episode. Uh, anyway, but we have good, good, like, really prospects. Uh, really, I taught Julian Draxler to play that center mid position. I think it was just the yellow before, but not 100%. And, but yeah, he's a good player for the future. Still only 19. And yeah, he's got pace and just everything. And there's Roman Nordstadter. Again, he's a very good center mid. Like, he's good defensively, but he's not bad going forward in terms of passing. Uh, not going to score much goals, obviously, but he can assist. As you can see, he's got three so far in the league. And, yeah, he's still 24, very good age. Uh, he's, like, he's not a young player anymore. When you turn 24, 25, that's when you're really expected to become, like, a key player for the team. And, yeah, he's a, a solid player without being amazing. Amazing, I should say. Anyway, Henrik McKitterin. This guy was our big money signing, as you know. Uh, mental attributes uh, definitely is key. We bet out, like, I offered him, uh, I gave him a big contract because Manchester City also made an offer. Uh, Shakhtar wanted big money, uh, and then due to that, when I when they rejected my bid, um, he wanted to go on the transfer list, so then me and Manchester City made an offer, and I really had to, you'll see that in the contract here. What does he have? Uh, uh, yeah, 66,000. Uh, for each goal, uh, 5,000 for each appearance and all that kind of thing, team of the year as well, and obviously I changed that to pounds right now, so I'm trying to get used to it with saying pounds instead of dollars, so uh, be wary of that, but anyway, uh, here's the team, obviously the confidence or the condition is a bit low because, um, like I want to have all my players in, like it's against Bayern Munich, so I have to put in my best players. But anyway, I've got some players here. Afalai, I don't know. He doesn't... He, like, my other players are playing better and the morale. The morale is probably the most important thing. So I want to get the guys with superb. Only one... you got Howard S, who's probably our best centre-back. But Papadopoulos and Joel Matip are playing fantastically. So uh, leave your comments. What do you do in that situation when you have better players that's coming back from an injury, but your current players are performing well and have good morale? What do you do? So I'll just leave it how it is and um, hopefully can put out a good performance. Uh, anyone in the reserves that can make an impact? Not really. Need some reserve players for some of those players. Anyway, uh, moving in. And yeah, I'm actually going to try and do heaps of episodes. Like you're going to see um, heaps of Football Manager content, but I'm going to do like heaps of games. So you're going to... Um, so I don't skip games a lot. I know a lot of people like play a month in and stuff like that. Uh, like do updates for every single month. 
and I understand what like I did that previously because it takes a long time. But actually, I don't have so much time to play Football Manager. I like to get so much. Like I can't play so much games during a day. And so I thought when I just play, I might as well ad- record it when I do a game, and then I'll just have heaps of games for you to watch. It may take a bit longer to get through the career, but um, yeah, that's it. I can't play it enough as I probably did before. So yeah, hopefully hey, you understand all that, and yeah, we'll try and get a win against Bayern Munich somehow. Um, as you can see, to me, our results have been solid. Look at that, 21 goals in the league and only 8 against. So uh, if we can do something like that in this match, it'll go a long way in us picking up some points. But yeah, Bayern Munich, Tony Cruz, he's probably one of the uh, players I like in Bayern Munich. Like His passing ability is undoubtedly just one of the best in the world. He's just a fantastic player. So with that, I have to uh, tight mark him and close him down. And he doesn't even have a weak foot, so I won't waste on that. Um, who's here? Yeah, Mario Gomez. I'm going to try and do all those things I do for them. And Mandzukic as well. Does that mean Ribery's not in? Yeah, I think Ribery's injured. So that's definitely lucky. Ribery, no, not tackling. Take that off and on closing down. And yeah, we got Arjun Robin. Obviously, he's still there, but he's 90 condition. So I have to obviously uh, do hard tackling once again. Um, and hopefully, he can get an injury. I know some people said that's not the point to try and get him injured. <laughs> it's just how often you tackle or something like that. But anyway, um, I've gone with that and it's been very good. And some players off the bench, I do hard tackling on Shakuri if he comes on. And yeah, that should be it. Don't worry about the rest of them. But yeah, Bayern Munich, undoubtedly, they're the best team in the league, if not the world. Like They could easily match with Barcelona uh, at full fitness or any other best team like Manchester United, whoever, when they have Ribéry, Gomez, uh, Robin. A best team, but the thing is, if I can hold on to my job, my job for like uh, maybe three or four seasons, because uh, Ribery and Robin they're like 28 and 29. Like in three or four seasons, they're going to be a uh, 31, 32, and they aren't going to be as good as they were. So if I can hold on to my job then and build a good team, uh, that's when I can challenge for the title. So I want to hold on for the first couple seasons. Um, uh, so yeah, I'll just move on with that. Uh, yeah, team talk wasn't that good. But look, superb morale. It was superb already. And look at that clash down Hunter, 18 goals. But the thing is, we haven't had many other goal scorers. Uh, it, but we are playing with a lone striker, so that's probably the result to that. So, um, yeah, that's really the foundations of the formation, pretty much. The striker is the key man, uh, the target man. And yeah, hopefully he can do something in this match. Who's their centre-backs? They got Bad Stuber and Dante. Obviously, world-class centre-backs. Obviously, not the best in the world, but they're a really, really good center back. So it's going to be hard. We're going to have to, uh, all of our players are going to have to step up. Timo Hildebrand, uh, he's kind of getting the position above our other goalkeeper right now. But Huntelaar getting in, he's not really a great crosser. But on this occasion, finds Herger. And Herger finishes with his head, I believe. And yeah, actually, he's touted as the next Mikhail Balak. And also, a new signing we're getting in. I forgot his name. I'll show you at the end of the episode. Uh, but anyway, Huntela, uh, he, I was really surprised there. Like I said, he's not really a great cross of the ball, but Marco Herger coming in. And a very good finish there over Contento. Uh, he's not a great fullback. I suppose that's their weakness pretty much. they got, um, yeah, Diego Contento. I believe his name is Diego. Sorry if that's wrong. <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, see, look, Papa, look at our defense. They always push. Oh, he's, it's going to be a goal. It's going to be, yeah, this is a goal for Gomez. And yeah, like I said, I, I was about to say that my defense are really pushing really high and um, yeah, ideally, I wouldn't want that to happen, but of course, uh, that's why we conceded a mistake at the back, a mistake by Hildebrand. Uh, let's see again what happened here. Yeah, it was just a bad pass back, and that really wasn't ideal. I didn't, and why, I'm wondering why Hildebrand, Hildebrand was that high, but I'm um, yeah, not sure. Anyway, I won't focus on that. Uh, but we look good. Like some matches, even when I'm winning, like I'm not confident with how I'm playing, but I'm really, I like how the ball movement, how we're moving the ball around, that kind of thing. It, it really looks good to me. Not sure. Leave your comments as well. How my team are passing it around. I really like it. How my fullbacks get forward. Uh, Christian Fuchs, he's a great crosser. And Bastos, having them both playing, which is very good. Huntela, oh, he could, could have got that and could have been a winning or to put us in the lead. Um, anyway, let's see some other results here as well. Uh, sorry, it's not that wide, but that's just my screen size and all of that. And you can kind of tell the teams. But anyway, Julian Draxler with the corner. Uh, Papadopoulos, 
Matip, like I said, those two center backs are playing fantastic together. Matip, he's got some very low attributes, but then he's got high attributes he needs for a center back. He's got pace, a very good tackling and positioning, that kind of thing. Um, he's just doing fantastically. His rating currently is 8 for average rating, and he's still a young player. So him and Papadopoulos, part of the future right there. And even Howardess, he's only like 24 and he's half captain. So uh, with this FC Schalke, we've got a very young team. And as I said, if I can hold on to my job for the first couple seasons, uh, when Bayern Munich, their best players, which are their older players, and if they don't make amazing signings, uh, but they have money, so they could, but you just got to hope they don't. Anyway, Michal Bastos, could he score here again? I cannot believe this form right now. Our players are just lifting. Michal Bastos, he's on loan, obviously, from Olympic Lyon. Uh, so I've got to think to whether to make a move for him or not, but he's getting older, so I probably won't. I'll probably just sign a younger option, but he's playing well for us, so I'll just see what happens with that. I suppose there was a bit of a lucky goal, got the interception. Uh, Michal Bastos, of course, he can play fullback as well. He's probably uh, a better fin like finishing goals like in that situation. Obviously, him and Christian Fuchs, they can both play uh, left mid and left back, so I'm not sure what your thoughts. You, you probably think the same that, uh, where are we? that uh, Michel Bastos is m better as a left mid compared to Christian Fuchs. But yeah, uh, leave your comments as well. And please watch in full screen and HD. That's the best way uh, to watch my videos. It will look exactly like how you're seeing or how I'm seeing it. Like To me, it does anyway. I say we've got to guard against complacency now or complacency uh, because, you know, especially against Bayern Munich. Of course, Michel Bastos angered, but then I'll just say I'm pleased with his performance. Uh, where are we? I'm very happy with his performance. Uh, not we didn't fix it, but anyway, that's just one player, to, and the rest of the team, or most of the team, uh, was motivated or gained focus. Gaining focus is the key thing, especially for our players in midfield, uh, to not really allow them to score. But here, I'm winning by two goals against Bayern Munich, so um, this should so really show the board that I'm, this is the signs that I'm on a good road, uh, signs are looking good, and yeah, I should be able to hold on to my job, regardless of what happens in the final 30 minutes of this game. And yeah, the really future is looking bright. We don't really have too much older players, just a couple in there like Jermaine Jones. We're looking to replace them. Like, there's a couple I'm going to replace, but most of our team is our younger players. I know apart from uh, Huntelaar, we'll probably need to look to sign really a big striker. I signed Iago Aspas, uh, Aspas, I should say, who I'm probably going to bring on now because Huntelaar's fitness is on 67. Uh, yeah, we signed him at his release clause. If you're on the update, his release clause or clause <laughs> um, is just below nine million. So I recommend, like, even though he hasn't scored a lot, uh, he's played well in terms of passing and that. Um, only one assist, but he's been very good in the Champions League. I suppose um, I would take that. He scored two goals, two assists, and one player of the match. So yeah, I'm really happy with that, especially as his worth is eleven million. Uh, to and I bought him for just under nine million. So yeah, I would. Suggest, it really depends what role you want him to play. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure if he can be a good strike, like a lone striker, like I have this position. But this formation and tactic is really good. Uh, but yeah, he's finishing. He's very very good one on one. So I'm just seeing it now as it needs. To, I need to like give him time to gel with the team. To he's got. Don't forget, he's going from Spanish football to German football. So. Uh, yeah, you got to allow for that, Michel Bastos. He got angered, so I'm going to take him off. Uh, bring on Henrik Mkhitaryan. And yeah, I went to this formation because more players can play the the right mids and left mids instead of the wingers. And yeah, it's a more balanced formation, especially when playing against teams like Bayern, Mu Bayern Munich. Uh, yeah, <laughs> anyway, I'm pr pronouncing these words weird today. I just woke up and I already did a, a commentary for my Southampton one, a career mode. Uh, but, and going on that, I'm going to do a lot of uh, football manager... Uh, I'm I'm almost getting to around um, like a month from now. I, it would have been a year when I started my YouTube. So um, yeah, and I started a football manager. So I'm gonna really do a lot of football manager at least until FIFA 14 is out and see what we'll do there. But anyway, I'm, here I'm looking to uh, put someone on. Maybe I'll put you cheetah in the right midfield, and I'll look to put on uh, uh, say Kalesniak or Kalesiak Kalesiak. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who the, I've never heard anyone pronounce this guy's name. So I've got to. Um, eventually, I'll get fluid in saying his name, like my fluid, like my team will get fluid with his tactic. But anyway, he's very good defensively as a rotation option, and only 19 as well. Um, so yeah, he has definitely heaps and heaps of room to grow. And already, he's a solid defender, has potential to be a very strong Bundesliga player. So um, I'll swap him with Yuchida right there. Yuchida, he's better going forward, as you can see. He can play there, and uh, yeah, that's it for now. And hopefully, can go in, uh, have a good team talk with my players.
Uh, just say the pressure is off. That's what I usually say. Uh, leave your comments. What do you think is best for bringing on a player? I suppose the situation is different if you're winning or losing, but I just go with the same with that one. So, yeah, hopefully that is good. And, and yeah, hopefully they can continue. Just don't give away two goals. Uh, but as you can see, some other results here. Nothing really amazing. I'll try and make that a big, like, larger. Okay, there you can see a bit more. And you can still see that there. So, you see Gomez. He scored 19th minute. Uh, G uh, Gruther Firth, I think they're called, against HSV. Uh, they're winning. Uh, Freiburg against Wolfsburg. I'm not sure. I haven't played this for a couple days, so I'm not sure who's... I showed you before, but it's hard to remember because I'm doing my Arsenal Let's Play as well. And yeah, that's going to be like my videos. It looks like it's gonna we're going to win here, so I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, that's going to be my videos for the future. Like Football Manager, I'm going to do one like a Let's Play and then basically... A one like this, a story type, where I may uh, talk about more stuff. But I do want to do it in Arsenal as well. But yeah, it's kind of different. I'm not sure. I just go with that for like two different titles, I guess. Because uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to get views for Football Manager. I'm not sure people know. And so it just brings different... Because, you know, you got to put different titles and stuff. And um, yeah, that's the point of YouTube, isn't it? Like some people say I make videos... Um, like I put things in the title to get more subscribers, but I sit back and I think, isn't that the point of YouTube to get more subscribers and more views? And I'm not sure that's just me, but to me, that's the point of YouTube to to get more subscri subscribers, and that's how you do it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> moving on. I uh, just gotta say, I'm very, you gotta be. I'm surprised no one else got a good reaction from that. But anyway, uh, say Kolasinac. Um, yeah, they only had one shot on target. Obviously, they dominated possession, but. And we move up to third now, so hopefully our board is happy with that. You think finally they'll be happy, but we'll see <laughs> how they're going right now. Um, we've got a three-one victory. You've got to be happy with that. Draxler impressing, a fantastic prospect for the future. And yeah, I'll just leave all that. Yeah, I'm sure you're not too interested in that. Uh, yeah, this guy right here, Leon Goretzka, we signed uh, for ten point seven million pounds when his value is at that much. You know, um, Sports Interactive they did well. They made it harder to sign uh, young prospects which is very good. You can't go out like you used to and buy these guys. Uh, probably previously, you would have been able to buy them for one or two million and you could buy maybe three or four of those. So um, it's more realistic that Sports Interactive did that and uh, you had to make them, you got to uh, splash more cash to get like these prospect players. So uh, that's very good. And yeah, that's pretty much it. He's been dominating for Bochum in the second Bundesliga and hopefully can do the same for us. Well, he, he's just getting that experience um, exposed to first team football uh, as a younger player, only 17. No doubt he'll become a good player for us. So, yeah, um, hopefully that's it for now. Also, Jimmy Jego, I know some people say he's not good enough. I know one person said uh, he's definitely not good enough. But don't forget, we have a reserve team. He might be a good signing for the reserve team. And who knows, he might develop into a rotation player for us. And yeah, you've got to make signings for your reserve team. Uh, Schalke, too. I'm not sure what league they're in. If you see fixtures, um, they don't even have any matches. I'm not sure what, maybe it will go, sometimes that happened for me. Um, in the first season, my reserve team doesn't have matches, but in the next season, they do. That might be the case. As you can see, there's a big squad here, so you might just add to that. And any players here, who knows? I haven't really checked this out too much. Um, who's playing well in this reserve? We've got Danny Radke. Um, he's got six goals, no picture, but he's got 17 finishing. That's heaps uh, for a reserve. Then five composure. Obviously, um, to me, that doesn't mix well. He's he's got bad composure, which obviously means one on one, but his finishing is bad, so um, that is a bit weird to me. Maybe he just lacks the composure when he's one on one with a keeper, but um, yeah, I guess that's the reason. Uh, but this guy's scored some goals as well. Philip Hoffman, I believe he's out on loan. Uh, again, a 19 year old. Yeah, a lot of these players aren't going to be good enough, and I don't have the logo for that team. That's why I probably won't go on him at a match. Uh, we've got Kalias. Yeah, this guy's a bit older. I think ideally, a lot of things. A lot, um, or at least what I'm going to try, I'm going to sign a lot of older players that could come into coaches, and then while playing in this reserve team, they could also help younger players reach their potential. Um, I think that could be a good thing. But who's playing well? We've got this, oh, I suppose this is just from one match. Oh, this guy's Niall Zander. He's on loan. Again, all these younger players are players that's not going to be good enough. But yeah, um, uh, who knows how some players may develop. Uh, this guy's played regularly for Schalke too. Uh, Dominic Ernst. Again, they're just not good enough. And ideally, I want to sell a lot of these players. Uh, but anyone, yeah, I, I'd have to go through heaps of them. You've got Rafa, Ralph Farman. Again, uh, he's actually not bad. I suppose he could be good as our third keeper. Uh, but anyway, 
I'm more happy about an under-19 squad. We've got some good players coming through. Like I said, Donis Avidaj. Um, he's a very good player for the future. As he's touted as the next uh, closer, a Marisov closer. And, yeah, to me, it's a bit mixed with him because he's not fast, but he's small. So, yeah, that's kind of a bit worrying, but he's very good technically. Good passing technique, finishing, dribbling, first touch, all that kind of thing. And, yeah, he's doing very solid. Uh, he's doing okay. The guy who's really dominating in this league, well, not dominating, uh, Tim Bodenroder. Uh, he's got six goals in 13 appearances. But again, nothing... He's got flair, so he's got that special... He can, like, uh, pull out of those tricks and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, really got to see how he develops and that kind of thing. Anyone else doing well? No one really... We've got Maxime Milan Mayer. Where did he go? I'm not sure. I think I put him in the... Oh, here he is. He's injured. Uh, he hasn't even scored yet, but he's more... I'll be looking to play him as that center mid, as attacking. Um, you know, I put the arrows down, but in the mindset or mentality, uh, then it's on full attacking so uh, he could be good in that role I guess but he definitely needs to work on his strength but I believe I'm doing that in the training yeah his strength let's see if he's improving on that uh, yeah he's improving a bit there he's got some very high attributes dribbling first touch and technique no doubt they're going to be 20 into the future so he can be good uh, with the ball at his feet so hopefully that can be good uh, who else has been doing well in our defense as well uh, Patrick Dragon another guy without a picture but again uh, he's got very good ratings uh, very pacey for a center back 14 pace so um, we'll see how he develops, but most likely I'll sell him. Because I know it might sound a bit weird, but I don't like players when I don't know what they look like. They don't have a face pack, and I have heaps. I've got a big, huge face pack. Um, heaps of players. As you can see, most players I click on have some. Uh, anyway, yeah, he's not bad. But this guy is probably at least the best. In terms of how good his attributes are, Khan, Ihan. Uh, he's obviously, in terms of his attributes, he's the best one technically. And we've got heaps of those, like I showed you before in our defense. Uh with Kolesinak, he's got very similar to him. As you can see, he can play multiple positions. But yeah, I'll leave it at that. Leave your comments on him as well. Do you think he can be good enough? Um, or what What do you think his best position he could be? Because he's pacey. He can play on like fullback positions, but his crossing and dribbling isn't great. But uh, fullbacks are more so defensive, but they attack as well. So it's just a mixture of both. And he's very good mentally for only a 19-year-old. So leave all your thoughts on the things that I said in this video, uh, things you've seen. Uh, we don't have much budget left. That's because we just signed... Uh, Goretzka coming in January and a fantastic player as you can see look at those attributes for only 17 as well uh, He's gonna be that's exactly the signing we need We nearly we really needed that center mid that is good defensively, but good attacking as well and for the future also um, As you can see Nacho has a center mid perfect and he gets forward whenever possible shoots with the power and dictates the tempo What else do you need? Uh, but yeah, um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, anything else? Yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. So leave a like if you want more videos of this Schalke story. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.